Now all of that is going to meet up with that original batch of liquor in the conch. And the conch is where some of the magic and mystery in chocolate making occurs. Um, the conch is a big drum and it has a big paddle scraper blade that uh, turns continuously and then it has a very large veil sprayer pump in the center which sucks the chocolate up, sprays it out in a veil, it hits the sides and goes back down again. So those two processes are happening simultaneously and uh, what they serve to do is aerate the chocolate and gas off all of the volatile acids that occur naturally in the beans. So whatever bitterness there is in um, the nib is, is gassed off in the conching process. Now, the reason that it's kind of mysterious is because no one can really fully explain exactly what happens to the chocolate in the conch, um, and also because there's really no formula for conching. So when we're making uh, a batch of chocolate, depending upon the the uh, profile of the finished chocolate that we're trying to achieve and also depending upon the original flavor of the bean we might conch for 11 hours or we might conch for 72 hours and we don't know until we start making it uh, what which it's going to be we take samples all the way through by lifting up this lever here the chocolate will spill out we actually mold it up at regular like four six hour intervals taste it and uh, you know the tricky part is that it's very subjective because for example at a certain point in the process you might have rounded off a lot of the bitterness but there might still be an edge that you want to soften but there might be some wonderful nutty undertone and and we if we continue conching we might be able to round off the bitterness but we might lose that complex nutty note and there's no telling what will happen so we do tastings all together. We try to make the call together and we try to determine together when it's actually done. But it varies from batch to batch and from bean to bean. So that's the conch. Once we're done conching, the chocolate is ready to be made into bars. But now once the chocolate's finished, it goes into one of these three holding tanks. And when we're ready to make chocolate bars, the chocolate is pumped up through the tanks, through this last bit of our pipeline. And it comes down in a little trickle here and goes down into our tempering unit. And the tempering process is basically a very controlled cooling process. The chocolate comes down, it circulates through a drum underneath in this chamber and comes back up through this spigot and the chocolate's tempered. So it comes down at about 125 degrees Fahrenheit and it's slowly cooled to about 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And at that point, it's ready to be molded into bars. The tempering basically means that the cocoa butter molecules in the um, chocolate will solidify in the right formation. And uh, that's very, very important for the finished product because if you've ever opened up a chocolate bar and seen sort of a slight white film on it or anything like that, we call that bloom. It's not mold. Sometimes people think it is. The chocolate is still edible, but it means that the um, it means that the chocolate wasn't tempered properly and the fat particles have started to separate from the cocoa solid. So proper tempering is really important for the life of a chocolate bar. Next, when we're molding chocolate bars, uh, the chocolate is carried in 10 or 20 pound batches over here to our depositor. Our depositor with the nozzles, you can see the nozzles down there. Our depositor when we're molding bars will be hooked up to this cooling tunnel. This machine is called an enrober and the enrober is what we use for making our handmade con uh, confections. But when we're making chocolate bars, the depositor will be hooked up to the cooling tunnel. These are our uh, racks of molds. The molds will go one at a time through the nozzles and then get carried right onto this belt, which is moving, and then they travel through the cooling tunnel. The cooling tunnel takes about uh, nine minutes, and they come out on the other end, which I'll show you through these doors. The bars are caught on this end. They come out of this end, and at this point, we have a, a line of production people. One person catches. They sit on these metal racks for about 40 minutes and they cool down in the molds uh, and the chocolate contracts.
so that uh, after about 40 minutes, they can be carried over to this stainless table. The mold is tipped ever so slightly, and the bars come right out. They go onto these racks. You can maybe get a nice shot of these. These are our racks of chocolate bars that are ready and waiting to be wrapped. And you can see the beautiful sheen on the top of those chocolate bars, which tells you that they have been extremely well tempered. And once the bars are ready for wrapping, they go onto this wrapping machine, which is a crazy, amazing uh, machine that we, we brought back from Germany. And uh, it was built in the 70s. And uh, our building engineer actually had to go to Germany to get a tutorial on how to use this machine and have it adapted to fit our um, custom bar molds and bring it back. But it's all mechanical, so when it's working, there are a series of arms and levers that actually carry uh, the bars on a track, uh, fold the foil and the wrapper over them, and tuck everything in into a really nice envelope wrap. I'll show you what that looks like over here. But when it's cranking, that machine can wrap about 130 bars a minute. Just like that. Isn't that a beautiful thing? There's our finished chocolate bar. <laughs> this is our 84% Ghana Fair Trade certified beans from the west coast of Africa. We're pretty excited about, about that. Trade. Yeah, Fair Trade is an amazing organization. They're, licen they're licensed in 17 countries around the globe. We'll leave. No, we'll go out here. You can bring everybody in. Fair Trade works with farmers to organize them into, gr into grower cooperatives. Um, and it basically enables the farmers to um, secure a premium uh, living wage for their cacao. So regardless of the commodity price for cacao, the farmers are guaranteed um, a minimum for their crops. And what this means is that these farmers, who uh, some of whom earn $1,000 a year, can actually um, afford to continue growing cacao sustainably um, and at the same time feed their families, educate their children, um, and put uh, a portion of the money back into their communities. So we're, we're very strong advocates of fair trade. We work closely with Transfair USA. They're the licensing agency for cacao in uh, Berkeley, California. And we are the only roasters of fair trade cacao in the entire country. We're the, we're the first and only people to actually bring fair trade certified beans into the United States. Our next uh, bar that we're making is uh, a 74% bar featuring Ivory Coast beans uh, that are fair trade certified. The Ivory Coast is notorious in particular for uh, all kinds of um, dubious labor practices, in, including slave labor and child labor. So we're particularly proud to have brought fair trade beans in from the Ivory Coast. We're very excited about that.